Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the drop down element to go and drive dynamic searches in your repeating group. In this example here, I have a list of recipes and I have uh, dinner meals and lunch meals and breakfast uh, recipes. So I've got hamburgers and pasta dinners as well as a turkey sandwich for lunch and, and so forth. Now let's say that I just wanted to look for a list of recipes for dinner. I can come here to the drop down, select dinner, and then I just get the list of dinner uh, recipes. In addition, I've also got a slider um, input here and that's set up for calories so you can see the calories of the meals here for the recipes and I can change this and it'll start doing a search for those um, dinners that have 350 calories or less. So if I slide it back over here I get this one for hamburger for 375 calories and then it goes and it uh, filters those out to uh, meals that are less than 300 calories. And then again, I can go to the drop down and take a look at all of the different um, uh, recipes that I have on my list. Now, again, this is an example of recipes in your bubble app. You might have uh, vehicles, for instance, so cars and trucks, and you might want to go and do searches on those. Um, or you might have different user types. You might have uh, students or teachers within your app, for instance. So you can use this drop down. And instead of breakfast and lunch, you could have teachers and students, and then you could run dynamic searches for your list of users in your, your app. So let's get over here into the design. So I have this repeating group, and it's for looking for uh, recipes. Uh, so the content in here is recipes. Again, for yours, it might be vehicles, it might be uh, houses or rental properties or properties in general or types of users. And I have a search for it. Um, so for this one, I'm searching for recipes. And I have this constraint in here for calories, less than or equal the slider input calories value. So the slider input is this slider input right here. And so I'm taking that value as a constraint for the search. I'm also sorting on here. So I'm sorting by calories as one of my data fields, and I do want it to be in descending order. So I've got that selected to yes. Now to add the constraint, I basically have calories, and they're less than or equal to. And I'm just going to start typing in slider, input calories, value, just like that. And that's how you set up the initial uh, search for the repeating group. And then over here, and this is really the magic of the, uh, this capability using the, the dropdown. So I have the dropdown uh, repeating group selections value. When that value is all, then I want to do a search for recipes. And it's, it's pretty much identical to what we just looked at here for a search for recipes. And so I've got the search for recipes, the calories less than or equal to the slider inputs value. And then I have uh, the sorting again. And you might be asking, well, why do I have this in here at all And for this conditional? And the reason why is I have these other conditionals, dinner, lunch, and breakfast. So if I selected one of these other ones, but then I wanted to take a look at all of the recipes, I need to have a value to go and do that. So that value is all. Now let's walk through an example for the uh, search for when it's dinner. So when the drop down value is dinner, so when I come over here and I choose dinner, I'm going to do a search for recipes, and now I'm going to put this constraint of meal type e equals dinner. And then the calories is going to be similar to what we just walked through. And then similarly, the calories are sorted. Now to get the this constraint, it's basically meal type, which is another data field, equals. And now I'm going to come over here and type in dinner. Now make sure that you type in dinner exactly as what you have here in the drop down. Let me come back over here. And the reason being is because if I type in a lowercase d, that is not the same as what's in the drop down menu, and uh, the constraint won't behave as you expect. 
so make sure that your spelling in your cases, the capital letter is uh, accurate between what you have here in the constraint as well as in the dropdown. The rest of these are pretty much identical. So for lunch, it's similarly meal type equals lunch. For breakfast, the search is meal type equals breakfast. Now to add the condition, it's basically when, and I'm going to type in drop down because there's a lot of elements on this page already. So when this drop down uh, repeating group selection, the value is, and again, I'm just going to type in breakfast as an example, and then change or select a property to change when true. I'm changing the data source. And for this one, I'm doing the search, do a search for. And I gotta, whoops, I gotta slide this back up. Do a search for, and I'm gonna be searching for recipes. So I've got a lot of data types in this already, but for this one, so I'm gonna do a search and then the meal type equals, and then type in breakfast like that and so on and so forth, just like we did up here earlier for breakfast. And so that's how you add the condition to it. I'm just gonna go and delete the condition there. Now, let's see, for the repeating group, in case you're not familiar, uh, let me just quickly show you. So repeating group over here on the left-hand side, the element, the repeating group. And then for this one, the type of content. Again, this is recipe for yours. It could be uh, user, it could be vehicles, properties, and, and so forth. So similar to what I just done on the conditional, I'm gonna be doing a search for recipes since my data in this repeating group is going to be uh, of type recipe. And uh, that's it. That's how I set it up. And then I put a text field in there just to show the different uh, values for that cell. So current, uh, current cells recipe, and then I've got these different uh, data fields. So calories was one of them. And then that's basically how I have it uh, set up. And that's how you add the repeating group. I do have some other videos that go in more detail uh, for repeating groups. Uh, so check out uh, in my channel. I'll try to get a, a link into here as well for you. On the dropdown uh, for this one, it's uh, again, the, the different values, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you're not familiar with the dropdown, I'm gonna come over here. And again, the element is drop down. It's static choices. Uh, for this one, I'm not dynamic choices, comes up with other fields for doing searches. Um, so this one, it was all and then lunch and so on and so forth. And that's basically all that I had for the uh, drop down. And then over here for the slider input, so slider input over here, this element. And then for this one, uh, the minimum value, so I, I had 200 calories and 400 calories. So I just simply go in here and change those values, 200 and 400. And the step on here, so this is where you go and every time you slide it over, it goes in increments of 50. So that's where you change or put this value in here for the step. Everything else I didn't change and left alone for the uh, for the slider. And that's basically how you set this up. Um, do a quick refresh here. And I'll have my, oops, something moved over. Let me, uh, there we go. Rerun this again. Okay, I've got all my recipes here. And then again, if I wanted to look at lunch, and then I wanted to go and then filter by calories or constrained by calories, I can. So that's it. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate that. And subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. Thanks.